Okay, hi everybody. So in this lesson, we're going to take a look at solving trigonometric equations. We're going to use the unit circle. And for the most part, what we're going to get here are exact values for our, our angles here. So we're going back to the, the little tricks that we had learned in some previous lessons for remembering uh, the sine, cos, and tan for, for 30, 45, 60, and then the quadrantal angles. So first, before we get into that, we want to make sure that we're we're reminded of interval notation and how that works. So remember, if I'm looking for angles, okay, so the, if the domain that I'm looking for is between 0 and 360, um, one way I can write that is with interval notation here. And remember, with the less than or equal to, I'm going to use the, the square brackets. That, that means that I'm including the endpoint. Whereas something like from 0 to 2 pi, where I'm, I'm not including the endpoint, I'm going to use parentheses. Okay, so hard brackets, if you want to think of it this way, and I know sometimes we refer to it like that, these are hard, and these one, this one right here is soft. And likewise, you might go from 0 to 360, where you, you don't include the 0, but you include the 360. And, and again, that's why you're seeing the parentheses there, and then the, the square brackets there. So now, before we get into doing some specific problems here, let's just take a look at some steps that we might follow. So the first thing that we're going to do in all of these cases here is we're going to isolate the ratio. Now, for these questions that we're looking at in this lesson, they're going to be simple, simple trig equations. Um, what we want to do is is to review how to solve these simple ones so that in a in a subsequent lesson we can make them a little bit more difficult by making them quadratic, um, and then after that we're gonna we're gonna use some identities to hide them in here. But this is the foundation that we build that on. We need you to be able to solve these these simple ones. So we're going to isolate the ratio first. Then what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to look in that given domain. So I, I want to know where in the domain we're looking, and then I want to I want to know um, where I'm looking. Okay, I'm going to determine the quadrants. Now I might do this when you actually do these questions. I'm going to do this in a, maybe a slightly different order now that I now that I take a look at this. I would normally look and and think about the domain that I'm in, then look at the quadrants. And then what I'm going to do is is look for that reference angle, okay? I'm going to use that ratio and the trig function that I'm given, and then I'm going to put those that reference angle into the quadrants that I found to figure out all the solutions that I that I've got in that domain. Now it might take me a little bit to go into that domain. Sometimes what I'm going to do is as I'm actually going to come up with a general formula. And then start to find all of the solutions until I get the ones that are in the domain that I'm looking for. Sometimes that's the easiest way to do that kind of a problem. Anyway, with that said, this is sometimes a lot of blah, blah, blah. Until you actually start doing problems, uh, this might not make a lot of sense. So let's go through and, and do, some, do some problems. So here we go. So solve the following equations on the given domain. So... What I'm seeing here first with this first question is that I've got a domain of 0 to 2 pi. So basically, I'm looking for my answers in, in radians, but I'm looking within a, uh, the first rotation around the, the circle there. Then I'm going to take a look here. I see that sine is isolated, which is awesome. It's equal to negative 1 half. So then I ask, so where is sine negative? I know that sine is associated with the y coordinate. Whoops. Sorry about that, everybody. I know that sine is associated with the y coordinate, and sine is going to be, yeah, there we go, sine is going to be negative down here. So I'm looking in quadrants three and four. So the next thing that I'm going to do here is I'm going to look for the reference angle. And notice that I'm, I'm changing the variable to, to alpha, so I'm looking for the reference angle. Theta is the rotation angle, okay, that's the rotation angle going to there or going to there. Um, I'm looking for the angle inside the triangle. Now, where does sine go to one half on the unit circle? And notice I've dropped the negative. Uh, the negative tells me what quadrant I'm in. Okay, uh, I don't need it anymore. I need to know how big that that angle is that's inside the triangle, that small angle uh, that's inside that triangle there. And this will be the inverse sine of a half. I go look that up on the unit circle, and I find out that the angle that corresponds to sine and a half is going to be pi over 6. So now I know that I'm looking for an angle, a, ref, a rotation angle, with a reference angle of pi over 6 in quadrants 3 and 4. Well, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. There, if, I, if I cut 
the top half of the circle, pi, into sixths. That's how many I have. But I want to go one more. So I need 7 pi over 6s to get down to here. And then I keep chopping this thing up into 6s. And if I want to go up to here, if I count that all out here into the fourth quadrant, that's 11 pi over 6s. Okay, and you can see that I go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 to get all the way around the circle. And those are the answers we're looking for for that first question. For question uh, 2 here, again... 0 to 360 is just a single rotation. This time I'm in degrees, though. Now what I want to do is I want to isolate that trig ratio. So I'm going to bring the root 2 over, then I'm going to divide by 2. So I'm looking where cosine is equal to positive root 2 over 2. Well, I know that cosine is related to the x-coordinate, and x is positive in quadrants 1 and 4. And so now I'm going to look for alpha. And so I'm, whoops, and so what I'm going to look for here is alpha is equal to the inverse cosine of root 2 over 2. And when I look that up on the, the unit circle, okay, I'm looking for the x coordinate that's root 2 over 2, and I find that this is 45 degrees. Okay, so in quadrant 1, that's, that's pretty straightforward because in quadrant 1, the reference angle is the rotation angle, so that's going to be 45 degrees is the first angle. And then when I go all the way around the circle to this next one right here, that, that second uh, terminal arm, that's going to be 45 degrees short of 360, so it'll be 315 degrees. And so there you go. So those are the first two. All right. Now for questions three and four here. Uh, for question three, we look and notice that the domain in this case here is just the half circle. Okay? So just 0 to 180. Now, Tangent is equal to a negative value. Tangent is a combination of the x and the y coordinates, and tangent is negative when the x and the y coordinates have different signs, and that's going to be in quadrants 2 and 4. But in this case, just looking at my diagram there, I'm really only looking for that second quadrant angle. So the next thing I'm going to do is look for my reference angle, and this time I only want the reference angle to be 1, and again, I'm ignoring the negative when I'm looking for the reference angle. So that will be the inverse tan of 1. And when I look on my unit circle, I should notice pretty quickly that the x and the y coordinates are the same at 45 degrees. And that's what makes tangent equal to 1. So what I've got now is I'm looking for the angle in the second quadrant that's 45 that we're the, sorry, I'm looking for the angle that has a reference angle of 45 degrees in the second quadrant. So I'm, I'm 45 degrees less, okay, if you want to think of it this way, less than 180. And so the answer here, this is going to be 135 degrees. And that's the only one I need out of that, uh, in this question, because I'm only looking in the one quadrant. For this next one here, so the, this question, question three had a limited domain. This one's got a, a larger domain. Notice that I've got a, a negative full rotation. So in between the negative 2 pi and 2 pi, there's a zero. Okay, if you look at those on the number line, it, there's a zero in between. So I'm going from 0 degrees around backwards to 2 pi, and then I'm going from that 0 degrees forwards to positive 2 pi. So from negative 2 pi to positive 2 pi. And now I need to isolate my trig ratio. So I get the sine of theta is equal to root 3 over 2. Just like I've done before, I'm looking at sine and trying to figure out what quadrants I'm in. And I know that sine is positive here. I can see it. Sine is related to the y coordinate. And y is positive in quadrants 1 and 2. So now what I'm looking for is my reference angle. Whoops. So alpha is going to be the inverse sine of root 3 over 2. And when I look that up on the, the unit circle, I see that I'm going to get pi over 3. Okay? 60 degrees, pi over 3. So now, what i got to do is find my theta in those quadrants. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go along the, the negative rotation. So if I go this way along, this is the first angle that I get to. Bearing in mind that what I'm doing here, with because my reference angle is pi over 3, I am chopping pi, or the top half of the circle, into thirds. So to get to this line going uh, clockwise is 1, 2, 3, 4, 
this is negative 4 pi over 3. If I want to go one further over and get to this one right here, that's going to be negative 5 pi over 3. And once I've got those two angles, I'm basically done with the negative rotation. So now I look to the positive rotation around that, uh, around the origin there. And to get to that first terminal arm, that is going to be a positive pi over 3. So that's this right here. To get to the one in the second quadrant, I simply need 2 pi over 3. Okay, or 2 pi over 3s, if you want to think of it that way. That might be an easier way to even say it, 2 pi over 3s to get to that terminal arm in the second quadrant. So I'm hoping that at this point you're starting to really see the pattern. I'm, I'm looking for the domain, okay? Then I'm looking at, I'm isolating the trig function and looking at its sign. That's going to tell me where to, what quadrants to look at in that domain. I ignore any negative that's on the ratio and use the inverse trig function and, and the unit circle to figure out what my reference angle is. And then I find the angle in those given quadrants. So now question five, uh, our domain here is we're back to a nice little domain, zero to two pi, I like that. And this time tangent is equal to zero. Huh? Well, normally at this point in time, I would be asking, what are the signs of the ratio? Like what, what sign is tangent, which means what quadrants is it in? But this time, well, zero doesn't have a sign. Zero is not positive. It's not negative. So what am I going to do? Well, this is where I now have to go back and think, okay, tangent, remember, is the y-coordinate divided by the x-coordinate. Now, this is supposed to equal zero. It's only going to equal zero, okay, if y is equal to zero. So now let's just think about this. As I go around this domain, okay, as I go around that full rotation around the circle, <coughs> at what points along the unit circle does the y coordinate go to zero? And and we all know this. I mean, if as soon as you've you've been introduced to the coordinate system, you know where y is equal to zero. But we just got to get you to thinking about it in that turn in that sense again. And sometimes it's hard to make that connection with trig. But the answer is here is it's on the x-axis. Anytime you've got an angle that hits the x-axis, the y-coordinate is zero. In that case, the tangent's going to be to zero. Now, in this case, let's take a look at our domain. Okay, What angles in our domain are going to lie on the x-axis? And the answer is, first of all, zero will. Then pi, when we come around to okay, a half rotation. And then two pi. Normally, we wouldn't include both 0 and 2 pi because they're essentially the same angle, okay, except for a rotation around the origin, but they, they point in the same direction. But in this case, the domain does include both of them, and so we have to include both of them as, as part of our answer. Now, for this one, uh, we are looking at negative pi to pi for number 6, So which means, and remember, there's a 0 in between here, so from the 0, I'm going backwards to, to negative pi and then forwards to positive pi. Cosine is negative. Cosine is related to the x-coordinate. The x-coordinate is negative in quadrants 2 and 3. And so now what I want to do is I'm going to look for my reference angle. I drop the sign. And now I have a, a look here and think, oh, now hold on a second. Cosine is equal to 1. Now when I think back to my unit circle ratios for cosine, Typically on there, I'm getting uh, 1 half root 2 over 2, root 3 over 2. That's 45, uh, sorry, that's 60, 45, and, and 30 degrees here. Well, that's, that's not it for cosine. That cosine is equal to 1. In fact, when you think back to the, the definition and what we have looked at in the past here, this is kind of the maximum value that cosine can get. This is an extreme which means that what we're looking at here is actually a quadrantal angle, okay? We're looking at, uh, whoops, it didn't all go away. We're looking at a, an angle that's kind of at the extreme of, of cosine here. So now I want you to think about this. Cosine is equal to negative one. Now cosine is the X coordinate on the unit circle. So as we go around the unit circle here, it's the X coordinate of the, those points there. 
it, it's the unit circle, so the radius is just one here. What I want you to think about is where does the x coordinate become negative one? Okay, and the answer is right here, negative one zero. So what angles correspond to that point right there? Well, it could be pi. And in this case, it could be negative pi. Both of those are included in our domain, and so both of those, those count here. So part of this is, is looking at this and determining when I need to consider those, those angles uh, 30, 45, and, and 60, and when I'm actually looking at these extreme points, okay, at the, these points right here along the unit circle. Okay? Question seven, in our domain, we are looking at just a nice single rotation around the unit circle. And now secant is undefined. Okay, now as soon as we start talking about undefined, we are talking again about these extreme values around the unit circle here. Now, so what this means here is secant of theta is undefined. We're going to leave it like this. That means one over the cosine of theta is undefined. Now just, just think about that. If 1 over cosine is undefined, what that means is, and just think about what, where we get undefined from, what scenario creates this undefined uh, uh, event here. And what it is, is it happens when cosine is equal to 0. Okay. Now again, cosine equaling 0, that's neither positive nor negative, so I can't, it's not like I'm looking in the quadrants here. Uh, it's also not the the ratio for cosine for 30, 45, or 60. This is one of the quadrantal angles, okay? It's one of the th angles that are on the axes here. Cosine is associated with the x-coordinate where along the unit circle is the x-coordinate equal to 0. And, and on, whoops, on the coordinate plane, that corresponds to anything on the y-axis. So we're looking here and here which means the angles that we're looking for here are going to be pi over 2, okay, and then coming all the way around, 3 pi over 2. And so for those angles, secant is going to be undefined. Now let's take a look at 8 here. Uh, this is an interesting one. What we're doing is we're reaching backwards a half rotation, okay, from 0 or from negative pi up to zero, but you can think of it as like reaching backwards from zero pi reaching uh, clockwise. Uh, so now the next thing I want to do here is isolate our trig function. Okay, so secant is equal to negative root two over two. I know that secant is one over cosine, which means cosine of theta is going to equal negative root two over two. Okay. Cosine is negative, so I got to think cosine is related to the x coordinate. Cosine is negative in quadrants two and three. Now, in this case, that means the only angle that I'm going to need to worry about here is the one in the, the third quadrant. And, and again, I'm on a negative rotation here, but I keep that in mind. Uh, now I'm going to be looking for my reference angle. I drop the negative. Okay, I drop the negative. And now uh, this is going to equal the inverse cosine of root 2 over 2. We are in radians, and so I look this up on the unit circle, and it's pi over 4. So now, chopping up that circle, that half circle into pi over 4, okay, there's 1, 2, 3, coming around that negative way. So negative 3 pi over 4 to get into the third quadrant. All right, for question nine, first thing I'm going to do is look at that domain, and it's reaching back to negative 180, so it's this clockwise rotation from zero. Uh, and then I'm going to take a look at here, and i got to isolate my trig function, so it's going to be cosecant is equal to negative two. Cosecant is one over sine, so now I'm going to reciprocate both sides. And notice, and I know I've said this before, but notice that I, we don't reciprocate the angle. It's not one over theta. Okay, it's 1 over the sine of theta, and then I reciprocate both sides here. Uh, sine is negative. Sine is associated with the y-coordinate, and y is negative in quadrants 3 and 4. So we're going to get two answers here. And then I am going to ignore the negative. 
and look for the reference thing. I'm looking for the angle inside that little triangle that we make there. And so this will be the inverse sine of, of a half. And when I go look that up on the, the unit circle, I see that this is going to be 30 degrees. So now, if I follow that negative rotation around here, this is going to be 30 degrees, so negative 30 degrees in that quadrant 4. And then I'm going to be, in, this, in the third quadrant, I'm going to be 30 degrees short of 180. So this is going to be negative okay, uh, 150 degrees. And so those are the two angles that we're, we're going to get for this question. For question 10, ah, okay, we've gotten to one here. All of a sudden, our, our domain is basically busted wide open. It's all real numbers. And notice I have to tell you in this case that we're in radians. Okay, so I'm going to have to come up with a solution that, co that covers all of them. And that's okay, because with coterminal angles, there's a, nice, there's a nice bit of repetition here. So what I need to do to start off with is get my function uh, isolated, the trig function isolated. So I'm going to get secant of theta is going to equal negative 2. Secant is 1 over cosine. And so just like we did in that previous question, I'm going to reciprocate both sides and get negative 1 half. Okay, so on the, the circle here, where is cosine negative? Well, cosine is associated with the x-coordinate, and x is negative in quadrants uh, 2 and 3. Now I'm just looking for my reference angle. So my reference angle is going to be the inverse cosine of 1 half. And that is going to be at 60 degrees, or pi over 3. So now, the, the two angles that I would get here... Okay, because I'm in the second quadrant here, and just think about how this works. That would be 2 pi over 3s here. And then to go all the way around to that one in the, in the third quadrant, that would be 4 pi over 3s. Now, but what I need here is I need a, a expressions that are going to cover the infinite number of angles associated with those. So my, ang my angle theta here, there's going to be two parts to this. First of all, we're going to go 2 pi over 3 plus n2 pi, so multiples of 2 pi, where n is an element of the integer. So where n uh, is an integer, so we're talking about whole rotations around the circle. Okay. I think my, my pen might need new batteries here. And then 4 pi over 3 plus n2 pi, where n is an element of the integers. So both of those lines we're going to need uh, to to represent all of the possible solutions to to this problem. Okay, in question eleven, we are looking at just that half rotation, zero to one eighty. I got to do a little bit of work here to get that trig function isolated. Cosine is positive. Cosine is associated with the x coordinate, so that's going to be quadrants one and four. And so now I am looking for the angle inside that little triangle, the reference angle. So this is the inverse cosine of root 3 over 2. And when I look that up on the on the unit circle, I see that it's going to be 30 degrees. So my reference angle is going to be, in this case, 30 degrees for that first quadrant. It turns out that's the only answer. At least that's the only answer that's in the domain that is of interest to us. So awesome. That one was a great one. Very quick and, and easy to solve. Now for question 12, now, okay, now we're looking at a weird sort of a domain. So for question 12, I start going around the unit circle until I get to pi, and but that first half rotation doesn't count. It's not part of the domain. But then pi does, and then this becomes 2 pi, 3 pi, 4 pi. So we're going twice around the circle, but we're not including in our domain the first half rotation around it. Now let's take a look at our trig ratio. I've got cotangent, which is 1 over tangent. So tangent is going to equal 1 over root 3. Okay, notice tangent is positive. And that is going to occur in quadrants 1 and 3. And so now what I need to do is figure out what that angle inside the triangle is. So alpha is going to be the inverse tangent of 1 over root 3. Okay. And 
you think about it for a little bit, you look at your unit circle, you, you look at where um, the numerator of the, sorry, you look at where the y coordinate has a one in the top and you look at where the, the x coordinate has a root three because remember tangent is y over, over x. And it turns out this is going to be 30 degrees or pi over six. So now what we wanna do is put this into our domain. Now, normally I would say that our first angle, when we follow that through, would be pi over six, but that angle doesn't exist in the domain. And so what I have to do is I have to go around past pi. So I'm going to be a pi over six past pi. So that's gonna be seven pi over six. And then I gotta do a full rotation and then I'm a little bit, I'm one, I'm, I'm one beyond, one reference angle, one pi over six beyond a full rotation. Well, in the full circle, there are 12 pi over sixes. Okay, I'll just draw this over here. There are 12, so there's one, two, there's six there, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. There are, when I divide pi into sixths, I divide the whole circle into twelfths. So if I go a full rotation and a little bit, that's 13 pi over six. To now go all the way around, all the way around to here is, is basically three pies, okay, or, or three groups of pi over six, which is going to be 18 pi over sixes, and then I'm just one more into that third quadrant. So that's going to be 19 pi over six to get me into that uh, third quadrant there, but near the end of that domain. I tell you right now, one of the, one of the bigger problems that I, I see students have here is they get the right reference angle and they get the right angles in the wrong domain. They're not considering the domain in the question that they're giving. Uh, they just by default go to zero to two pi or zero to three sixty. So just something to be aware of.